Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Fly RC Joe's Workshop. Doing some foam wings today, and I do my foam wings a little different than a lot of people. Um, and it's just something that has evolved over time that I really feel that it's stronger, and I'm going to describe why and a few other things. So, <clears throat> I pre-lay all of my leading edge, trailing edge, all my aileron stocks, everything, and I want to kind of describe how and why. So, when you're sheeting a foam wing and you don't pre-lay it, it all works, but what happens is you only have a 1 16th glue joint with your sheeting attaching to this. So, what happens over time is this is a very old airplane. Um, your leading edges they start to break loose just a little tiny bit and that's where these bubbles come from and it was something that I really noticed and I've tried all different kinds of glues and that's where this kinda evolved from. I just couldn't stand that I could see my end caps um, even though they're extremely smooth but this is almost a 10, 11 year old 40% airplane that I built um, and it's held up very very well but that is why this came about so I will do my full wings and then I lay out everything and I just draw it onto the foam and then I go through and I cut it and I have 3 8 because I'm doing this 8th inch here it just depends on what you want to use um, the one big key when you cut it you got to remember how soft and flexible these wings are so you got to be careful when you're applying this that you don't cause a curve in your wing um, so I draw blue lines that I actually use to follow the the foam when I'm gluing it on. Now, I'll show you one over here. Say hi to Mike. Hey Mike. So, I just literally tape them on. Now, the other key, when you're pulling your tape, remember, eighth inch and things like that, you can actually cause a curve. So don't pull too hard and you are playing with very very soft foam so you can actually dent things so when you're applying this use a sight a very very soft touch I have found that I really like blue tape uh, to the white foam it really does hold the best um, it will start to pop over 24 hours things like that but and the other thing is I use Elmer's white glue I've done a bunch of brake tests and I found that the Elmer's white glue wood to foam seems to be the strongest bond or Elmer's uh, polyurethane glue but you get a lot of foam and it's hard to see these lines that's the reason I've just went back to the white glue um, so once it's all done and dried now you gotta start sanding everything off and getting rid of these little top pieces so I just apply a, a line of blue tape on there so that you can have a nice reference mark to work on. You can sand on it and it doesn't ruin it. Um, so what you're going to do when you're shaving these, please make sure that the angle is correct. So when you're doing your aileron, make sure it goes uphill when you're doing your foam you just want to make sure you'll notice that this is perfectly flat to the top and then I'm just going to slowly shave this down very carefully with a very sharp razor I mean a sharp chisel the reason I like the white chisel is so that I can see the angle um, then you're going to take 80 grit paper and you're just going to come along And you're going to sand that and you'll notice that because of the tape you're able to sand it right down and you'll see the scratch marks how it looks 
but it hasn't been touched right here, so I know I'm not perfectly to the edge. Now, I will still leave these a little bit proud um, on purpose, and then when you pull off the tape, you're going to have a little bit to sand back off. And the reason you leave it proud is when you're said and done, and you've got this one shaved, you're actually going to take some CA and you're going to run a small bead on the top but nothing in the middle so that that's all going to get chopped out when you cut your bevel for your ailerons. Then you can literally glue this together. Now, and then you're going to come back through, you're going to pull all the tape off and you're going to just give it a light sanding to make sure it's all perfect. Um, and then you sheet it. So, but then I will actually go through and find out where all my servos are going to be, all my boxes, and I will pre-lay in all my channels because sometimes you have to run a curve to hit a certain point where your wires are going to come out. Um, so I pre-lay everything down in there and same with my boxes. I also custom build all my boxes so that they fit the servo perfectly so that they recess down inside. Um, that way when you're said and done you can actually get it to where this rubber grommet is actually flush with the top. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So you're going to notice that these are flush right here to the top and that's really really what I like. I don't like them to sit up top. Um, Sometimes I'll recess them a little deeper on these ones because I know I needed the nuts. I didn't sink them down in too deep, but these need to at least be flush. It's just something that I think looks really, really neat. Now you're going to look, see how this is yellow covering, but you don't see any stock? That's because everything was pre-laid. Another reason pre-laid kind of came about is because my wings were so big and so thick I didn't want to invest in a bandsaw that could cut, you know, something six inches thick. Um, so that was another reason this came about. So going into, I guess, my wing design, my wings are a little different. It's taken some real time to kind of perfect how this works. But I built a thin wing design that I call a high altitude wing. But right here through the center section is quite flat compared to most people. I'm not pronounced on my CG point. Um, what it does acts like a bottom of a trainer plane. It adds a lot, a lot of lift, but it does not induce a lot of drag. And also my CG point is quite broad compared to most people. Most people you got to be right at 33% depending upon the airplane. On mine, I can pull them from a 31 all the way to a 36 without really a lot of change to the airplane. The airplane flies perfectly neutral all the way through the field. Um, it's really, really helped. It generates a ton of lift and not a lot of drag. They sound like a glider. Um, when you shut down the motor, they really have a neat whistle to it. Um, so they're super, super clean. Um, so this is one that I'm working on. Uh, I'm recreating some stuff on a PAU 43% edge. I absolutely love the old wing, love the airplane, but I just want to try something different. You know, if you don't try something different, you'll never learn. So, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts and processes. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please make sure to ask and we'll, we'll get you answered. So, um, anything else?